Uh, welcome to this video. This is an introduction to additive and subtractive solid modeling in using Autodesk Inventor Professional for uh, introduction to engineering design. So let's go ahead and get started. This solid modeling, this is not the wireframe modeling that we've been doing, the wireframe sketching that you do with a pencil. This is solid modeling. It's completely different. It's not just done on the computer but the computer treats it like a solid piece of material. So, of course, you're familiar with wireframe. That's what you've been sketching uh, your whole life. Not what we're going to be doing. We're doing solid modeling. All right? It has surfaces, it has density, it has volume, it has weight. We can decide, uh, we can assign it a uh, material. We could say it's aluminum, we could say it's oak. There's many different ways of creating a part. What we want to talk about today is additive and subtractive. So additive, things like welding, gluing, mechanical fastening, joinery, these are all additive methods of combining one piece of material with another piece of material to get a larger piece of material or a larger part, uh, larger structure. So that's the way we're going to build our first part. So if we look here, we can see um, the part we're gonna be making. This is very familiar to you guys, it should be. We've drawn these before by hand. This is designed based on the 3 quarter inch cubes, so there'd be one here, one here, and then four more here. So there'd be six little cubes, six little three-quarter inch cubes uh, making up this part. So the question is, how do we draw this in CAD, right? Well, method one would be, what if we drew the back portion first, and then we added this little cube? Or, you can see that's three-quarters of an inch each time. Or method two, what if we drew the bottom of this and then add it on this little piece on top. There's another method. Or you can go crazy and draw all six cubes individually. All right, so each of these six cubes is drawn individually and all added together. That's a possibility, but is it an efficient use of our time? Probably not. So we're gonna try method number one. That's the method we're gonna try today. So you see this red portion here. That's what we're gonna draw first and then we're going to add this gray portion next. So when we look at the dimensions, like I said, each of these little blocks is three quarters of an inch. Well, two of them together is going to be 1.5. So it's 1.5 high because it's two cubes high. This first line here is two cubes wide, so it's also 1.5. One cube is, of course, three quarters of an inch. Another cube sticks out three quarters of an inch. This last line is going to be 3 quarters of an inch. And then we have three cubes here, which is 2.25. And then we're going to do something that's called extruding. We're going to extrude this shape to create the back portion, that red portion, or now the yellow portion here of our part. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here we are in Autodesk Inventor Professional 2016, just like it is in your classroom. And we have, we're going to choose part because that's what we're going to be making. We're going to be making a part. So this takes a little while to open up. Always remember, the first thing you need to do when you walk into the lab, open up Autodesk Inventor 2016. And unless it crashes, keep it running during the period. Don't, if just because you're switching to another part, doesn't mean you should shut it down. Don't shut it down, especially if you're asking Mr. Reedinger or your instructor to come over and take a look at it that would be a bad time to shut it down. All right, so we're gonna get started here. First thing we wanna do is save. We haven't done any work, but all the work we're gonna do, we won't lose any of it. So we're gonna click Save. That little icon right there is for saving. That's a little, looks like a little floppy disk, which you're probably not that familiar with. Or you can click on the big I, the application button, reveals the application menu, and we, right here we can click Save also. You can see it's the same icon. Or we can click Save As, either one. So we click Save, it's as good as any other, and we need to find the location where we're gonna be saving this. We're not saving this on the computer, we're saving this on our USBs. So I find my USB, and there's the image, there's the folders that are on it so far, but we're gonna create a brand new folder. Right click, and New, and Folder, and then you need to name that folder. It's all set up, it's highlighted, ready for you to name it. So let's name it IED. And then you can use your initials or your name. Then inside that folder, so I left, I double clicked on that folder, left double click. 
we're going to create subfolders. This is a way to keep our, our documents organized. When I come and I talk to you and I say, oh, show me model creation number one. You should be able to show me model creation number one and know that that's in part four. That's uh, in unit four. If I come and say, oh, show me the paper clip. Well, you should know that's in unit five and that will be in your unit five folder. If I look, ask to see the windshield, well, that's an Automoblox vehicle. It should be in your Automoblox folder. So we're going to click folder again and I'm going to name this one unit four. Good. So now we're going to open up unit four and this is activity 4.1.g and it's the additive part. Additive and then add to that your initials and click Save. Excellent. Now we're ready to roll. So we're going to start with Start 2D Sketch. And when I say Start 2D Sketch, you don't need to click the pull down menu. I'll tell you if I want you to choose the pull down menu, I'll say click the pull down menu. That's if we needed to switch from 2D sketch to 3D sketch. But because we want 2D sketch, just click on the icon and it'll save you time. So we need the XY plane. If you notice there's all three planes are here, the XZ, the YZ, and the XY plane. Normally we're going to start on the XY plane. There'll be uh, opportunities to try to start on a different plane in the future, and I'll talk about those when we hit those. So we've clicked on the XY plane. Now, I prefer to draw in the upper right quadrant. Well, how do I get this to move down? Right, this is the origin, and I don't like to tie things to the origin because then they're stuck there. So there's a couple different ways of doing it. What I want you to do is on your mouse there's a little wheel. Don't scroll the wheel just push the wheel down and it's a button and you get a little hand and then I can grab that screen and push it down. Alright, so I pushed down the button, not rolled it, not scrolled it, just pushed it down until it clicked and now I can move the screen around. Next step, we need to draw that original rectangle. Well, it's not really a rectangle, it's kind of a combination of rectangles, isn't it? So we're going to need to draw lines. So I choose line. I come down here. This is a good place to start. I'm not on the origin. I'm not on the axis, but I'm just off of it a little bit. It's an excellent place to start. And if you've ever used paint, in paint you have to click and hold. We're not going to have to do that. We click and then we just move upward. We want to make sure that that line is at 90 degrees. So that first highlighted box is telling us how long it is. The other box that's not highlighted, that's telling us the angle. So we want 90 degrees and we want a line that's 1.5 inches. So type 1.5 and then click enter. And we get our line that's 1.5 inches long. So you notice it goes off the screen a little bit. Yours may be, if you scrolled your wheel, yours might be a little bit different. I'm just going to click front. Okay, see where I am over here at front? So I clicked front and that resized it for me. Then I pushed down on the wheel and moved everything over to the left. So I have some more room to work. Again, we want a 90 degree angle and we're going to type in again 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches. Where am I getting these dimensions? from the PowerPoint that I was just showing you a minute ago. If we click over there, these are the dimensions. 1.5, 1.5, 0.75, 0.75, and then we're going to work our way back again. So 1.5, enter, and then we go downward again at 90 degrees, 0.75, that's 0.75 inches, or 3 quarters of an inch, and I clicked enter. I move to the right, again, 0.75. Now you could move this line, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out, and try and get 0.75. Trust me, it's faster just to type it. Use the keypad on the right side of your keyboard and just type in 0.75 real quickly and hit enter. Now 
this next line is also going to be 0.75 and we could enter it but I want to show you some of the tricks. Inventor is always trying to help you and give you aids. So if you notice when I came over here to the origin where we started we get a little green dot there. Okay. Now when I go back again if I stay horizontal to the origin I get a dotted line. Now of course I'm not at 9 degrees but if I click tab I could enter 90 and there you go see it's at a 9 degree angle and so what I did was I just hit tab tab takes me from one to the other and back and forth so there you go I'm right at where I want to be so I hit enter and then I go back to the origin I get a green dot it's very important to get that green dot that shows you that those two lines are congruent. They're terminating and beginning at the same exact spot. And what's nice is it snaps to that green dot. I'm close and boom. If you look closely you can see the green dot is actually to the left of my cursor. It snapped over there. And if I keep moving to the left, all right, I'm to the left of the green dot and the green dot's still there until now it's gone. All right? And now the line's traveling with me. So I go back, I get that green dot, and I left click. And there we go. There's our shape. You'll get better and better at this, and this will go faster and faster. I like what I see. I'm going to right click and choose OK. I didn't have to do this. I could have just clicked on Finish Sketch, but this is an important skill for you to learn when you need to turn off the tool that you're using. Currently, we're using Line, right? You can see it's highlighted blue. If I want to turn off line, this is how I do it. I can hit cancel, and I'd still have everything I just drew, because everything I did was um, complete, or I could hit OK, and I usually just hit OK. All right, it's a good habit to get into, and then I click Finish Sketch. Now, I can't quite see the whole thing. It's not super important, but just because you're beginners and you're getting started with this, I want you to use the Home button right there it looks like a little house it's called home click on that once that's a left click and this positions it better for you so that you can see what's happening as we extrude all right so we go up here and we're at the extrude button we click extrude and the first thing it needs to know is what the profile is well seeing that there only was one profile it knew what that profile was it chose it for us but it made everything an inch all right, if we go back to our PowerPoint, it's three quarters of an inch. That's how far we need to extrude. All right, see right there? So we're going to change that. I could change it here, or I could have changed it here. And now it's three quarters of an inch. It's in the direction I want. I could make it go the opposite direction, or I could go this direction, either way. And it's outputting it as a solid, not as a wireframe or as a, just a surface. And that's good. So we hit OK. Excellent. You just drew your first part. Now we need to add that little cube here in the front, don't we? All right. It's not complete. This little cube here needs to be added on. Well, that little cube is pretty simple. It's 3 quarters of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch. And then we extrude it 3 quarters of an inch. So we need to draw that square. If you notice there's a yellow line all the way around this, we're going to make that with just a single click. It'll be very easy to make that line. And then we'll be able to extrude that. So let's go ahead and take care of those steps. This is a good point to save. So I'm going to go up here to my little icon of a floppy disk and click to save that. Another choice would have been to do Control S that also would have saved. So how do we make another sketch? We made one sketch and if you notice that sketch is no longer visible. It's been consumed by extrusion number one. You see it there? It's kind of grayed out. That is because it's been consumed by extrusion one. So we need to make a new sketch. So we click the icon for start new 2D sketch and we click on this surface. You notice it's red. It's highlighted when we hover over it and we left click a single time.
remember I said we were going to draw that outline in a single click? We're going to use Project Geometry to do that. So I click once on Project Geometry at the left click, and I come back to that surface where we're sketching, and I click it once. One left click, and as I move away, now you can see there's a yellow line all the way around our part. Excellent. Next step. We're gonna, we could draw lines to make that rectangle, but let's use the rectangle tool. We don't need to click the pull down menu. The two point rectangle that's the default is perfect for this situation. So it's a two point rectangle. That means it needs two points to define it. The first point is gonna be in this lower left corner and you notice I have a green dot. Very important that you have the green dot. That tells us that we're right at the corner and not a little bit in or a little bit lower. So one click there, that's our first point, and now we're trying to define that second point. And I could just try and uh, move this just perfect and get the 7.5 ac uh, oh, across, no, oh, it keeps changing, doesn't it? It's much faster just to type it in. 0.75, tab, 0.75. And if I hit tab again, it goes back to the first one. So tab will take me again from box to box. They're both 0.75. Excellent, I can click enter. And there we go, there's our box. Nothing left to do. I right click, I click enter, I finish the sketch, because that sketch is all done. You can see that it's still highlighted, it's still colorful here in the browser. We're gonna choose extrude. Now this time it doesn't know which profile. Is it this profile or is it this profile that we're going to extrude? Well, it's this one. When you see that red arrow, that's the program telling you, choose this, choose this. You need to do this. All right? It's telling you. It's helping you. Okay? Never ignore the red arrows. And you can also see that it's highlighted blue. It's ready for me to choose that. So we choose the profile. This time it only extruded at 0.75 because that's what we extruded last time. So it goes right, it defaults to the value that you used last. It's trying to help you. If you don't like that value, you can change it. But we like it. It's the perfect number for us. If we go back to the PowerPoint, we can see that we need to extrude 0.75 inches. So we say OK. There we go. I'm going to come up here and click Save. And now we have made an additive part. Excellent. Next thing for you to do is make the subtractive one.